Денеска заедно со нас овде во студиото на универзитетското радио го имаме Брус Закарук од Американската амбасада од Скопје. Меѓутоа покрај тоа што работи во амбасадата на Америка во Скопје, Брус е влюбеник во астрономијата и во звездите. Па ќе зборуваме малку за астрономијата, малку за звездите, малку за неговиот престој овде во Македонија. Господине Брус, добро дојдовте во студиото на универзитетското радио. Thank you very much. Stargazing is a an an ancient art. Uh people have been looking at the sky since they were able to imagine things like pictures in the stars, animals, people. Um they could tell legends about about uh, the the heroes they would see in the sky, Orion the archer, um you know, lions, uh serpents. Um they could see, you know, they would see women heroines in the in the stars and they would tell those stories and there have been many different many different uh, constellations meaning uh, pictures that people would draw in their minds in the sky and you know that's that's how it all started so as people would uh, as mankind progressed they would ask the question well what do you think that is up there and there were many many different explanations like there's a tent over the entire earth and those are holes in the tent mm -hmm. or you know they they just didn't know and so they could surmise they could guess what these things might be and eventually people started to figure out oh those are those are suns like ours they're just far away so they're pinpoints of light and then uh, another interesting aspect of stargazing is that people noticed that some of the stars moved <laughs> and so they gave those different names and they all followed the same path. And so the, the original words for planets meant basically wanderer, a wandering star. And so they gave names to those stars, not knowing exactly what they were looking at. Um, they had some guesses, but they, uh, you know, they named them after famous, famous uh, you know, mythological uh, creatures. people, creatures, people. Um, Mercury was the fast one. so. Um, they they named that after the fast god. Then Venus, well, it, she was up in the morning and up in the evening, and that just wasn't around in the middle of the night. Yeah. You know that 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 became that story. Uh, Mars, the god of war, and a little red thing that was looked sort of angry. Jupiter, the big god. Saturn, you know that was the far the farthest away one, and that's all that the ancient people could see. And so they would tell stories about the wandering planets also. Да, кажавте како почнало се, меѓутоа како почнавте вие. Oh, how I started. Well, you know, I grew up out in the countryside and there were some other kids who were out in the countryside with us and we would go outside and we made our own constellations. We drew our own pictures in the sky. And so, um, you know, we knew some of them, like Orion, I mentioned that. But then if you look at, at Orion a above Orion, pointing toward the north, you'll see that it almost looks like he's holding a flag. Mm -hmm. So when we saw the man in the sky, we didn't see him holding a bow, we saw him holding a flag. Well, that flag pointed due north. It pointed toward the North Star. So we started making our own stories about how, uh, how things were arranged in the sky. And that caused us to want to learn more. And when we were old enough and we had we had our our first jobs we you know made our first money and we went to second hand stores and to pawn shops and we bought old telescopes um, before the telescopes we would look at things through binoculars but of course you can't really see that much more through a pair of binoculars unless you're looking at the moon that's 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 good but binoculars are always a good start but we, we went and we bought some old telescopes and many times we were buying other people's problems or things that people wanted to get rid of <laughs> or they were upgrading because it was so small. And so we had adequate telescopes. We could, we could tell that, say, Jupiter and Saturn would get larger when we would look at them, but we couldn't see detail. Um, we couldn't really, honestly, our first telescopes were, were good for looking at the moon and that was about it. Така, со себе донесовте опрема за стар гейзинг, меѓутоа за тоа што ќе гледа пошироката публика и во Штип, што е она што е потребно за стар гейзинг? 
Well, what I have now is a, is a medium-sized telescope. It's still portable, but it's large enough that I can see deep space objects. Um, when I talk about deep, deep space objects, I'm talking about Messier objects. On a clear night, out away from a city, I could point out things like, uh, like the Andromeda galaxy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of a dirty smudge in the sky until you put a very powerful telescope on it, and then you can tell what it is. You can see the, the sun of Andromeda? The, the... You can see the, basically the shape and the light mm -hmm. of it. Um, to really get a good idea, you do need a larger telescope than what I have. But what I have is perfectly good for observing the moons around Saturn, or the moons around Jupiter, the one big moon around Saturn, and you can see the rings around Saturn. You can see the stripes, the striations in the atmosphere um, on Jupiter. Uh, Mars is still basically a, a red dot, but it gets larger. So you can tell you're not looking at a star you're looking at a planet because it gets larger. A star will always be a point of light. Mm -hmm. Whereas a planet, if you know, you know you're looking at a planet, if when you put a powerful lens on it, it gets bigger. It becomes a disk. Um, Venus, we were talking about people would make stories about Venus and Mercury because they were the, the morning stars. And, you know, the interesting thing about Venus is it has phases like the moon. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Venus is up early, early in the morning, and... You know, we just can't we can't look at it right now. So yeah. um, it it comes up right now a little bit before the sun does. Да, а какво знание потребно за да 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 гледаме во звездите? Well, the advice that I was given when I was a kid was get yourself a good book on astronomy. But now um, there are beautiful websites out there. There are programs that will help you learn. And there's a free program out there. So I'm not I'm not pushing anybody's product that they're that they're uh, making making money off of, but there's something called Stellarium. And if you go to uh, Stellarium.com uh, or you just Google search for Stellarium, you'll be able to find it. It's a free download for any format of computer you have. Uh, 32 and 64-bit um, uh, Windows machines, Macs. Uh, I had been using Linux for, for many years, but I'm, I'm currently, uh, currently kind of a fan of Windows 10. Mm -hmm. So um, it's available in all these formats uh, for a free download. And it has so many features on it, I, I, I would honestly, I would have to have it sitting here in front of me and point out every little thing. The newest feature that I really enjoy is that it gives you the location of meteor showers. Mm -hmm. And so instead of reading and guessing and finding stars to locate the meteor showers, I can now... Um, I can look on the computer and I can tell where I should be expecting these meteor showers to be coming from. Okay, uh, ova ne vije prv pat uh, vo uh, štip. Uh, kako, kako beše posljednjat pat ovde? Uh, što možeše lugeto da, da vidat uh, vo, vo gralot? Imaš li zainteresiranost? People were very interested. People stopped by. We had, I don't know, maybe a hundred people show up. Um, there were there were students, young young people, old people, um, you know, people who were very interested in in you know the the interesting things that that science can bring, and you know ever you know people like looking through telescopes. We were fortunate the last time that we that I was here that we had a couple of planets up. Unfortunately, we won't have any planets in the early night sky, but we do have a waxing quarter moon, which means that we'll be able to see good contrast. Um, on the mountains of the moon, you'll be able to see craters, shadows, everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be able to see that tonight if the cloud cover stays the same. And so we're we're crossing our fingers and hoping that uh, the clouds don't come back. No. Because honestly, this morning when, when I woke up, I was like, oh no, the day's completely <laughs> ruined. Everything's completely overcast. We're, we're not going to be able to see anything. But that's another beautiful thing about Steep is that you have clearer air than you do in uh, in Skopje mm. and you don't have as much light pollution. Da, kažete mi ako nekoj saka da stane da rečeme uh, amater astronom, uh, što je ono što je potrebno uh, ili da rečeme kakav vid na teleskop mu je, mu je potrebno, kako da zna kakav teleskop da, da izberate? Ok, the first thing that you need and this is the standard answer is a pair of binoculars. That's to familiarize yourself with what's in the sky. 
um, that and either Stellarium or a good astronomy book. So that you can learn your way around the night sky and see how it's different from season to season. The second answer is when you start looking to get a telescope, you need to look at uh, your needs. Do you need to be mobile? Do you need something you can throw in the back of a car and that you can travel out somewhere with? Do you intend to only use this in your backyard? If you aren't going to be terribly mobile with it, you can get a larger telescope. Um, three inches, uh, as far as uh, a reflector telescope goes, would be a minimum. And actually, I, I don't think I've seen many that are smaller. Um, refractors, uh, the long tubular, you think of a telescope, an elongating telescope, yeah. um, you know, you get a good three inch or a four and a half inch one for that. And I'm sorry, I don't really remember the millimeter sizes. I know that three inches is, thir is 76 mil. pardon me, uh, three inches is 76 millimeters. So um, that is a minimum size uh, disc that you'll need at the bottom of the mirror. So if you, uh, if you go much larger than that, uh, you lose mobility. Mm -hmm. So if you're just going to be out, out in your backyard and you're away from the light and you're happy with your backyard and you have a good picture of the sky from there, you can get a bigger telescope. Now what I have, I've gone a little bit crazy with it. I bought a kit and there's a computer component to it, mm -hmm. which I didn't bring, but um, <clears throat> on a very clear night I can fix certain points in the sky and I can have my computer point to me where I need to go to find different objects. It's kind of cheating, but I also went, I, I got it the cheap way in that I bought this telescope as a kit, and I mostly put it together myself. So you have mobility, and you have exactly how far, how much do you want to see. And again, my, the price also. Uh, the price. Well, the price is also, also very important. So uh, a three-inch telescope is very affordable for a beginner, big beginning amateur astronomer. And what I have would be, I would say, a good second telescope. Mm -hmm. Of course, this isn't my second telescope. It's about my fourth, fourth or fifth. But, uh, you know, if you really want to get into it, you know, binoculars first, a smaller telescope like a three-inch, and then you work your way up to something like what I have, which is a six-inch reflector. If you want to go affordable, don't get a computerized component on it and rely on on programs like Stellarium or that good astronomy book that I told you like Night Sky. Така, предпоставам дека сте заинтересирани е сакате и науката. кажете ми за вашето искуство со македонците и нивната заинтересираност. Um absolutely, I've met a lot of very interested students um here in Steep in Tetovo in Skopje and I'm very impressed. There seem to be a lot of kids, and I say kids, I'm, I'm now in my 40s, so a, a college-age 20-year-old kid is, you know, I mean, I hate, I hate to use that word. I know they're, they're transitioning into their adult life. <laughs> Young adults um, who are very interested in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and they love to talk to me about it when they figure out that I'm, uh, I'm the engineer at the embassy and that I'm in the telescopes. So, yeah. and then of course when I start talking about cameras, I'm a, I'm also into that, but we're not here to talk about photography. So, yeah, yeah. so yes, I've found that a lot of Macedonian students, um, they understand that one of the building blocks for building a great nation is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It can't be stressed enough that, you know, you may have, you know, a rich guy who has the money to start a company or to, to get a project going, but the first people he has to talk to to get that to get that project moving are as engineers. Yeah. So I've met plenty of students who are ready to be those building blocks for the future of, of Macedonia and Macedonian society. I've been here for two years and this was originally a three-year tour but um, well we extended. My family and I had a discussion. We extended here meaning that we added a little bit more than another half year to, to my tour, and that way my son can finish the sixth grade here. Mm -hmm. So he'll will be here through the end of his sixth grade year. You have experience, as I know, from other countries, through the embassy in Sad. Can you make a comparison about what is Macedonia, what are the Macedonian people, what are the conditions here? Uh, the Macedonian people are very friendly. I've been able to meet a lot of people who. Uh, were greeting me with open arms. They're, they're, um, 
well, the hospitality is is very 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 good here. You have uh, regional uh, regional specialties like pride of pride of cuisine. Like here in Steep, I'm here to have the Pastramali yeah. again. Um, you know, this thing things people are very proud of, and rightly so. Um, Macedonian people, I you know, I, I love you guys. You know, it's this has been one of the best tours that I've had in the Foreign Service, and it's you know you're you're very you're you're happy people. Um, you know you're you're level headed uh, and you look forward to a bright future and that 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 always feels good. Да, кажувте многу пофални зборови, меѓутоа што она што не ви се допаѓа овде. Well, you know, the the uh, that question could also be asked what do you not like about being in big cities? Mm-hmm. I don't like traffic. I don't like smog. I don't like air pollution. Um, I don't like it when uh, there are 20 cars stacked up behind a red light. You know, we could say that about any any con- any 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 country in the world that has a big city. You can say that. So, you know, I I prefer to be in smaller towns. So, Skopje is about as large of a town as I I really want to live in. Well, thank you for your time. I'm very happy to be here to talk to you, and happy to be back in Steep. Thank you.